Barashith Ahad Ahad Genesis 1 and 1 <coughs> Our fellow student in Wales, Donald Grewar, he studies all the time and he looks at different inlinears and different things and he asks questions for me and I appreciate the questions of my students, especially those that are really thinking. That's good. Roger, Sharon, Marilyn, Rod, you guys think and you always have something. Now, I've said this before and we'll read Genesis 1 and 1 again and I want you to see something. A single scripture is of no private interpretation, is it? It has to go along with the rest of the Bible. Well, Donald, he studies a lot of different things and I know that he sees all kinds of translations out there and not even the lexicons translate Barashith correctly. You have to go into the grammars to do that. Gesenius grammar. Gesenius is the only one that I know that goes deep enough to do this. You can, I can put a stack of Hebrew grammars out here and Gesenius is the only one that goes back into Genesis 1 and 1 and of course uh, uh, Kyle and DeLeach, they go back there and if you go back in volume one, you'll look at some of this, you'll see some of their commentaries on this. Genesis 1 and 1, let's just look at it for a minute. And I've said this. Barashith, Bara Elohim, et Hashemayim, we et Haaretz. That's, I've said that 10,000 times. And I say that Barashith is a Hebrew plural. I can show you in the grammar where it's Hebrew plural, but if you go to the lexicons, the analytical lexicons, they'll put it in wrong because they don't realize that this is an older word than what the modern is. It's plural. We'll look at it. Bara, of course, Beth. That's a Greek or Hebrew preposition. The Greek preposition would be in. The Hebrew preposition Beth is on page 88 in Brown, Driver, and Briggs. Uh, the Greek preposition is on page 137 in the analytical Greek lexicon. Rosh is head or beginnings, and that's on page 912. And it's not really top secret, this, except that you have to look at it like it is. Now you can cross-reference all this over into Greek. The Greek Septuagint was translated incorrectly here. It was translated incorrectly. You have seen, we've gone to the Greek Septuagint from the Hebrew, and we have corrected that. All of my students can correct the Hebrew or the Greek Septuagint, can't you? Amen? Because it, they translated incorrectly. It wasn't inspired. Just like King James was not inspired. It's a translation. But they translated according to what they believed at the time. And the Hebrews believed in what? The Babylonian idea of creation when they translated a Greek Septuagint, didn't they? That's, what, that's what they, how they believed. So let's look at it, what it actually should say. In one of the beginnings, or literally in beginnings, and of course we have to interpret it in one of the beginnings, he had created Elohim at sign of direct object, the heavens. Now, here's where King James says heaven. And it says here, the heavens, plural, doesn't it? Is that what it says? Hashemayim? We at Haaris. And the earth. The earth there is singular, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Heavens is plural. The earth is singular. Now, in Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, in the New Testament, 1 and 10. Hebrews 1 and 10. Now, I said in one of the beginnings, didn't I? Now, whoever wrote the book of Hebrews, is that inspired? Yes. Hebrews is inspired, isn't it? 
All right, we agree that Hebrews is inspired in the original languages. And it says here, Kai, Si, Kot, Arkes, Kurie, Tain, Gain, F, or Ethe, Mela, Sos, Kai, Ergata, Karon, Su, Ethan, Hoi, Uranoi. And it says here, You, according to, according to the beginnings, plural, Beginnings, plural, our case. That's plural. Our case is accusative, singular, feminine, plural. I mean accusative, plural, feminine. Our case is accusative, plural, feminine. So, according to the beginnings, Lord, the earth, what does it say? The earth what? The earth you had formed and created. It You wished it to be. According to the works of your hands, they are the heavens, plural, there, isn't it? Yeah. So the writer of Hebrews is looking back at the book of Genesis now, by inspiration now. Now the writer of the book of Hebrews was inspired, we agree with that. Yeah. And this is the original language, so we know this is not an interpretation or anything else, but he's quoting and he's uh, uh, commenting on Genesis 1 and 1, isn't he? And he said, according to, in the beginnings, plural. And then he calls the heavens plural, it doesn't it. Okay. Now, go to Psalm. We go to Psalm 102. And verse 25. Lifanim, uh, out of old, old times, plural, out of beginnings, or in beginnings, the earth you founded, and the works of your hands. Now, we know that, that in the book of Hebrews, he's quoting from the Psalm 102 and Genesis 1 and 1, okay? Because these two words, basically, verses, complement each other. The work of your hands, the heavens, Shemaim. Is that plural? Shemaim is what, Brother Roger? Uplifted waters. Uplifted waters, but it's plural. <coughs> it's not singular, it's, it's plural. All water in Hebrew is plural. That's right, <laughs> because it's more than one drop. Yeah. Okay. Now... Let's go to the Septuagint. Septuagint. Psalm 102. Let's see what the writers of the Septuagint did here. What did they, how did they interpret? Now we know that they interpreted Genesis 1 and 1 wrong, didn't we? But let's go see if they got this one right. Since they believed that the earth was formed in, one, in the beginning, singular, the earth was formless and void. That's what they said. But now, let's see what they say about this, which quotes Genesis 1 and 1, which the writer of the book of Hebrews wrote. And this is really small print. According to beginnings, plural, Bob Sheath, according to beginnings, plural, you, Lord, the earth, you laid the foundation you wish this to be, and the works, plural, of your hands, they are the heavens, plural. So here they had no bias. So they translated beginnings, plural, and they translated heavens, plural. So Donald, thank you for your question. And now, now does that help you? Does it help you understand what we're doing? You, you, when you do anything, you have to, who's writing, who's he writing to, and what's the subject? Because here in, in my translation, and I've got what the NIV is Yeah. It's a, in, in Psalm, it says, in the beginning, singular, you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens, plural, are the work of your hands. That's in beginnings, English, yeah. but still, in beginnings, because yeah. they were going back to Genesis yeah. and going back to King James. Yeah, this is, yeah. It, it's interesting how one little... 
But see, people's preconceived ideas will show you how they translated. But the writers of the Septuagint had no bias when they were translating Psalm 102.25. But they had bias when they did Genesis 1 and 1. That's fascinating. Did that, did that help you, Brother Roger? Yes. Sharon? Marilyn? Yeah, that's, that just shows you now. People, I translate things so much differently than other people. You're not going to find that because my teachers were really, really good. Now, I went beyond them, as many people say, you went beyond your teachers. But my teachers put me on the right track to begin with. And then I went on from there. Now we're in Genesis, not Genesis, but Exodus. We Elay Shemot, the 21st chapter. Now, the last one we studied is that God loves you in every way and the one class before that, which you haven't been in, I don't think, unless you went online to do it, mm -hmm. the other one was women's rights, which I know that you women would really like that yeah, a lot. Women's back. rights. You've got to go back and do that. So women's rights. Women had no rights at all. Women have no rights in the Islam today, do they? Because we go back into the old uh, Arab Hebrew culture where women didn't have any rights. Jesus changed the world for women, people. He changed the world for women. Now, Roger, you'll have to help me with this, see. Um, you're in Exodus when? I'm in Exodus 21, verse 17. Okay. All right. Yumi Galel. Yumi Galel. Avi. Avi. We emo. Mioth. Yumi Oath. Why me oath? It says here, now what we're talking about here, the subject is you now shall not curse your mother or your father. You shall not curse your mother and your father. With children's lives, sometimes they curse their mother and father, don't they? By what they do, they were not, they, well, they're not doing what they were raised to do at all. All right. And he who habitually intensely and violently his cursing is cursing his father Aviu. he curses his father and his mother we emo to be killed that's a present that is a cal infinitive absolute isn't it brother roger cal infinitive absolute now the first one there he who habitually and keeps on intensely and voluntarily and violently cursing his mother. That's masculine singular, PL participle. See, that's a habitual. A participle is something that keeps on going, isn't it? And PL stem is what, Brother Roger? PL stem. What does that mean? You remember? Sharon? PL stem. Um, violent. violent before, action. Yeah. Yeah. Power. He's doing this powerfully. The one habitually, powerfully, and intensely, and violently curses his father and his mother. Aviu, we emo. His father and his mother to be killed. Cal infinitive absolute. There's no question about that, is there? This is the death penalty. In Exodus 21, verse 17. Okay. Well, I know it's in Hebrew, but... Okay. All right. Now, I didn't give one of these to Marilyn. She's really good in Greek, but in Hebrew, she gets lost. Yeah, I've got my Greek book here. Yeah, you got your Greek right there. All right. And then, uh, to be killed. Now, let's look at that. We himoth, you himoth. We your mouth, that is. We your mouth. What does that mean, Brother Roger? Third person masculine singular. I feel imperfect. Imperfect tense, that's what it means. He shall be killed to be killed, and he shall keep on being killed. He shall be kept on being killed. They will kill him until there's no more breath in him. 
They will kill him until he quits moving. Until he's dead. They will have a physician check for a heartbeat here, so to speak. Make sure he's dead. This reminds me of the story about Ben Bogard. And I have it in there in my library. But Ben Bogard was a Baptist uh, uh, family child. His father, I believe, was a deacon in the Baptist church. Well, Jesse and Frank James, after the Civil War, the carpetbaggers came into the South, and they took over. And the railroads and the banks confiscated people's horrible farms and properties. They had been off fighting in the war. They come home. They don't have any pensions. They have nothing. They were the losers. You know, they're the defeated ones. They come back, and the banks took advantage of all of that, and the railroads took advantage of it. Jesse James and Frank James could not go back to normal life because there was a, there was a death warrant on them, dead or alive. They had no choice but to do what they did. They robbed banks and robbed railroads because the banks and the railroads had taken and killed their families. The banks and the railroads had confiscated property of all theirs. And, and you that are from the South, like Maryland's family, they know this to be true. This is common knowledge back there. Well, Frank and Jesse James, the Youngers and the Daltons were first cousins with each other. Their mothers were the same sisters. They all had this problem. They couldn't go back into society. There was death warrants on them. They were going to shoot them or hang them. So they went to Robin Banks. The Youngers, their father had seven farms in the South. And he had a postal service, and they were leaning toward the north. They did not want the Union to separate at all. They, that was not what they wanted in their life because their whole family, all of their fortune, uh, depended upon the north. The contracts they had with the, with the mail, they were running the mail. Uh, Stagecoaches and things were not to run and carry people. What they were supposed to carry was mail, and they carried people as a sideline. Well... They confiscated, the North confiscated all the property on the seven farms of the younger family, the coal. And then they found their father on the road, and the Union uh, group, like a battalion of soldiers, shot him dead, stole every dime of money off of him, and took his horse and his wagon and everything. The boys were really upset. They burned all their farms down. Their mother finally fled to the one last farm, and they went out there and put her out in the snow and set the place on fire. Now, if that happened to you, what would you do? You would be very upset. Now, these boys had never done anything wrong, these youngers. Not, they were Baptists also. The, the Jameses, their father had founded five missionary Baptist churches, and the churches still, as far as I know, are still going. They were very religious people. They talk about him being a bloodthirsty killer and all that kind of stuff. He was not. They went from church to church, and they would make great deposits of money. Their whole idea was to go someplace else because they couldn't live in the United States anymore. They couldn't live here. They were going to go down in Mexico or go to Cuba and buy farms and stuff and, and, and have another colony there because they couldn't live here. They came all the way out here to California. They went up here to the Lebec. They went to San Francisco. They went up northern California. And that great cache of coins that was found up there, the gold coins, uh, probably 10 years ago, was Jesse James' uh, cache. He was the treasurer of the Knights of the Golden Circle. Well, they would go and they would buy these farmers out of Hawk where they could own their farms again with that bank money and with that railroad money because the railroads and the banks had taken it from the people. They were the, they were the enemy. Jesse James and Frank James came to Bogard's house, and they fed them dinner, gave them provisions, and Jesse James slept in the bed with Ben Bogard. I've got it right in the book in there. He sat there, he said, with that big pistol on his belly all night long. Ben could hardly sleep. He's all excited. And the next day, he was out shooting, and practicing, he was going to be an outlaw and a Robin Hood, just like Jesse James. And 
His father couldn't turn him around. He said, you know what? That's not a real good life. Look how they're running. They're going from house to house and all the kind. But, Dad, they're doing all this good for the people. What the railroads and the banks took, they're giving it back. And we can feed our families and all this kind of stuff. I want to do like that. Well, Ben's father devised a scheme. He took young Ben, I think he was 10 years old or 11 at that time, they, he took him to a public hanging. And this public hanging, this man had raped a woman and killed her husband. Now he was guilty of both and that's a, what we call raped and killed a woman and killed her husband. This is a double murder and rape. All of these charges, these three different charges were executable by death, okay? They still had what we call justice. Well, nobody could tell, and, and there was no eyewitnesses to this or anything, but they conjured up how they was because this guy's really guilty, so they're going to take a false, they're going to take a false witness. And they did. And they convicted, convicted him to be hung, and there was about a thousand people around here, and they had this big gallows up there with 13 steps going up to it. And this was a great big guy, weighed about 275 pounds. A big man, he had gained weight in the jail, too. They were feeding him real good. And he went out there, and the Catholic priest came up there and did last rites upon him and, and all of this. And he, uh, uh, he, he was standing there. They put a sprig, uh, evergreen sprig, in his pocket. And he got up there, and they said, Do you want to say anything before we, you're hung? Do you have last words of any kind? Yeah, I do. He said, First of all, these people had to lie in court to convict me. He said, I want to console your consciences, though, because I am guilty. I did it. But you couldn't convict me lawfully. But I did it. Since I'm going to hang, I'm going to tell you I did this. And so he went up there, they put the hood over his head, and they dropped him down to the trap door, and the rope broke. And he hit the floor, strangling. This is a triple crime. So they threw another lariat over the top of the gallows, run it down through the trap door, stuck it around his neck when he was choking and everything, and strung him up there with him screeching and screaming and growling and death. Right there, Ben Bogard decided he didn't want to be an outlaw at all. <laughs> to kill him and keep him dead. Normally, if a rope would break in a hanging, they'd say, well, that's an act of God, he's a goal. It's okay. But this was something that he could have been hung three times for. A massive crime. And so they strung him back up there, not humanely. They just stuck that lariat around his neck, and the guys pulled that 270-pound man up there, wiggling and writhing and choking and growling. That cured Ben of wanting to be an outlaw. Died and stay on dead. Now, he is going to curse his mother and father now. Either one of these he could be killed for, so they're going to make sure he's, he's to be killed. Cal, infinitive, absolute, and then to keep on being killed. Now, fail, imperfect. That's a death crime, isn't it? You don't curse your mother and your father. How do you curse your mother and father? Take everything that they have? Lie about them? That's how you do it. You take everything you have alive out and leave them there on the street, helpless. That's how you curse your mother and your father. Now, some mother, mothers and fathers may not be worth it, but it tells you don't curse them. Exodus 21 and verse 18. Wiki, Yerevum, Anashim, Wihikah, Ish, Eth, Rehu, Beaver, Beaven, that is, O, Beagroth, Willow, Yamoth, Winafal, Nemishkov. And when they keep on 
striving or contending. Cal, third person masculine plural. Cal, imperfect. Uh, men, on a shame. That's men in plural in the brother. Mankind. We, hikaw, and he shall have struck. He shall have struck, third person masculine singular, hifel, while wow, consecutive perfect. He shall have been caused to strike a man, eth neighbor, Ryu, the one close to him. Be evain, uh, with a stone, or with his fist. Now we have bar fight, barroom brawls here, don't we? And not, he uh, keeps on dying. He shall have fallen to his bed. In other words, he's caused to go on to his couch or his bed. He can't get up, he can't go. Somebody has beat him up so bad that he can't get up and walk. Emma Yukum. We hith halek. Ba shoots. All mish on toe. We nega. Ha make. Rock. Shift toe. Yetim. We rofa, revopa. That's a double P there, isn't it, Brother Roger? It is. Yep. We ropa. Yerapa. All right. If he keeps on standing up, and he shall have worked about, walked about, he shall have walked about, outdoors or outside, upon his uh, cane or staff, he shall have become the one smiting only, or one striking only, his setting, he shall keep on giving uh, Substance to heal, he shall keep on healing. Now let's go back and look at this and the. I usually look it up in the Amplified. <coughs> over here to Exodus. We lay Shemot. Exodus 21. Go back over some of these verses and see what all it's saying here in the translations. We talked about kidnapping before. And now in verse number, we started at number 16, did we not? Or 17. 17. And he who curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. He shall be killed and kept on making sure he's dead. And if a man have a quarrel and one strikes the other with a stone or with his fist or brass knuckles or a club, he does not die but remains in bed. If he gets up and walks about outside on his staff, then he who struck him shall go unpunished. He shall only pay for his loss of time. And he shall take care of him until he is completely healed. He will take care of him until he's completely healed. What do we call that? What do we call that today? Workman's compensation. All right, PL and PD, property and liability damage. Public liability and property damage, that's what it's talking about. We have insurance to take care of these things today. Verse number 20.
Wiki, Yaki, Ish et Avado, O et Amato, Bashavit, Yumeth, Takath, Yado, Nogom, Yen Nagame. And if, or we can say and because, that there we have we, that's a conjunction, and we have key there, because, and if or because, he uh, keeps on uh, striking a man, a male slave of belonging to him, of dole, or et, sign of direct doctrine, amatol, a female slave with a rod. Look at here, with a rod. And he shall have died under his hand to avenge him. He shall keep on being avenged. He shall be avenged to oneself. That's Nephel, third person masculine, the singular imperfect there. That word, Yenagim. That word to avenge there, nakom. That's to avenge, that's cal infinitive absolute. And here, this this word up here, this word yake, wiki yake. Yake there, that's third person singular, if l imperfect. He shall keep on being caused to strike him, a man, his male or female slave, with a rod, and he shall have died. Third person, nice and seen, or cal, while consecutive, perfect. He shall have died, or she shall have died, by his hand. By his hand. Verse number 20. And Moses, nope, And if a man strikes his male or female slave with a rod, and he dies at his hand, he shall be punished. He shall keep on being punished. Now let's go on to number 21. This is PL and PD. This is God loves you in every way because he's taking care of you. He wrote this thousands of years ago, didn't he, Brother Roger? Thousands of years ago. But still, do the courts of law still try to follow this to some extent? Because it's sound judgment. Ak, im, yom, o, yo, mi, im, ya, amod, lo, yukam. Now there's a double kof there, isn't there? That's a double. Yuk, kam, ki, kas, pa. Few. But if a day or days he shall keep on standing, uh, continuing, not he shall keep on being avenged. Third person, minus senior, cal perfect, or cal calp imperfect, for his money. For his money, for his silver, or for his money. What was a slave worth? 30 pieces of silver. 30 pieces of money or 30 pieces of silver. And however he survives a day or two, no vengeance shall be taken, for he is his money, his property, his slave. He's got probably 30 pieces of silver in him. Now here's number 22. This is one 22 and 23 we have problems with in the world today. Wiki Yenatsu Anashim Winakefu Ishsha Hara 
Wayatsu Yiladiha Wilo Yiye Asong Anawash Yi Anesh Kaasher Yashit Hello Baal Haish Shah Winata Bephilim And when or because they shall keep on struggling. Third person masculine material, Nephal imperfect. They shall cause to be keep on struggling a man. And they shall have struck a woman, a woman that is pregnant. Wayetsu. And they have gone out, her children. What does that mean? Miscarriage. She has a miscarriage. And not, he kept on becoming a mischief, to become mischief, to be an injury, to be punished. He shall keep on being fined. Just as he shall keep on placing upon him the Lord or the owner, the Baal. See that word Baal there? There's where we have Baal. The prophets of Baal is from the same word. Haisha, the woman's, and he shall have given through the judges. He shall have given to the judges. Go back and look at this in the English translation now. And if men struggle with each other and strike a woman with child so that she has a miscarriage, yet there is no further injury, he shall surely be fined as a woman's husband may demand of him, and he shall pay as the judges decide. They shall pay as the judges decide. This is, a, this is the death of a child. Now, in all reality, in our thinking, if they did this, guess what? We would think that was murder, wouldn't we? Or at least manslaughter today. Verse number 23. We aim a son, yeah, yeah, we not tata, nefish, tashat, nefish. And if Mischief or injury, that word ason there, uh, he kept on becoming. You shall have given soul instead of soul. What does that mean? Life or sight. What is soul? It's the life force. Soul is who you are. Yeah. You're made up of body, spirit, and soul. But the soul is where all your memory is. And everything. So now we have soul for soul. Do you know that when Israel went into the to the wilderness, that if they killed an animal outside of the tabernacle, they would be killed also? They considered it murder if you killed an animal. That's what it says in the Roger. You killed an animal outside the prescribed way of killing that animal, you were guilty of murder. Soul for soul. So your life. They could be stoned for that. 21-24 Ayin Tashath Ayin Shen Tashath Shen Yod Tashath Yod Regal Tashath Regal I instead of I. This is where we have the old eye for eye and tooth for tooth. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth. 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 Tooth for
tooth instead of tooth, and hand instead of hand, and foot instead of foot. That's pretty simple there, and now let's go to 21:25. Kawika, Wawiya, that is, Tashath, Kiwiya, Petsa, Tashath, Patsa, Chabara. There's a double B there, double bath. Chabara, Tashath. Chabarira. And uh, branding. This word branding. And branding or scarring. You go and scar somebody or brand somebody. You, you put a scar upon them. Now, they used to brand slaves, didn't they? In the biblical times and even in America, they, they branded Negro slaves sometimes. So they would have their wear their brand. The cattle are still branded. Uh, different sheep are, are marked by different ways. Horses are branded. Branding is a scar. So now you brand somebody. Branding for brand. Bruise instead of bruise. And stripe instead of stripe. Stripe for stripe. Scar for scar. Stripe for stripe. Bruise for bruise. Boy, if they applied this law today, what a safer place it would be in this world, wouldn't it? In California now, you can rob a man's house, but he, be, he can't be... California is very friendly to convicts and, and, and what we might call outlaws. It's outlaw friendly. Unless you go above, what is it, $900, you can't say that's grand theft. Now they're trying to put it on the books. If a guy steals your car, it's not grand theft auto. All of the laws of God are just set aside. The reason why we have so many outlaws in California is because the law is catering to the outlaws. They're turning them loose on the citizens. This here is God's laws. If you do this, things are going to be a lot better. If you don't do this, you're going to have chaos and anarchy. Let's look at this now in verse number 26. Wiki, Yaki, Ish, Et, In, Avdo, O, Et, En, Amato, we shik chatha, la cha feshi, you shi la shi chin nu, ta chath ino. And when he keeps on striking a man, I, his male slave, or I of his slave girl, and he has ruined her eye, or ruined his eye, free, to be set free, he shall keep on sending him away, instead, because of his eye. You hurt your slave, you knock out an eye of your slave, and that slave is free. You blind him, and he's free. You are been punished. Now, how much did he lose? 60 pieces of silver. 60 pieces of money, because that slave was worth money. So he lost that much money, and that slave is now set free. He's going to be set free with one eye, but he's set free. You know, when you've got two eyes, you can lose one, and you can still see. But when you only have one eye left, they're not going to give that, that slave owner one more chance to blind him in both eyes, or blind her in both eyes. No more chances. And that's going to cost him. All right, number 27. Weem, Shane, 
Avdo O Shane Amato Ya Peel Li Cha Feshi Yishala Li Chenu Chachoth Sheno And if tooth of his male slave or tooth of his slave girl he causes to fall out to be kept on falling out. He, he can loosen their teeth, but they better not fall out. Free, he shall keep on sending him away in place of his tooth. Your teeth are very important, aren't they? You can't eat without your teeth. You need your teeth. Many people in history have died because of poor dental hygiene and poor teeth because that can cause you to have a heart failure or heart attack or pericardial infection. And so God knew all this. So he said, you bust his mouth, you knock his teeth out, and they, he or she shall go free. He or she shall go free. Do you have any questions? We want to... From what to what? Seventeen. Twenty-one. Was it seventeen? Were we started or? Seventeen through twenty-six. Do you have any questions about any of this? Have any questions about this, Sharon? Well, I guess I just. Uh, I mean, back to the causing the woman to have a miscarriage. Yes. Just, I mean, I think it's more serious than that, but maybe because of their fertility rate, they figure, well, you can have another child. Yep. But sometimes the when they have a miscarriage, like, they can't have another child. I know. I mean, That's a problem, isn't it? Or, but maybe they're thinking you know, you don't know for sure she wouldn't have had a miscarriage anyway. You don't know yep. for sure. She could have been. She yeah. would have brought a child to full term, so... But, maybe that's why but that sick. child, now we know when a person becomes a person is when? When they're exactly. conceived. At very conception, they become a person, a soul, a living soul. You become a living soul at conception. You're not totally formed, but there's a living soul there, isn't there? And there's life and there's soul and there's pumping blood in that little body. That little body is a, is a body. It's very small, minute, but it is a body and it is a soul at conception. And that person, that soul of that being, whether he's miscarried or whatever, he shall be with the Lord. That's good. Brother Madden, as we were over there in the Middle East one time, he says, it would be a good thing if all these little old kids just died and miscarried or died before they come to the age of accountability because if they grow up, they're going to go to hell. He said, God gets the glory in all things. There's going to be more people in heaven than there is in hell because of the mortality rate. That little child got to go to heaven. That little child got to go to heaven. If a man hit a woman intentionally to hurt that child, that's a different story. This is if they accidentally hurt her. All right? He shall pay more for it, shall, shall he not? All right. Anything else? Nothing else? Sharon, would you dismiss us in prayer, please?